Namaste and welcome to another bicycle live stream on Sunday the 12th of December at 6.22am. I've ridden 32 kilometres and I'm heading home. I uh, have been meaning to do this live stream for three weeks now, but every Sunday the wind has been so strong that even with my lapel mic I've been and the wind filter on it, I've been worried about the noise. But today I'm like, oh look, there's still a wind. It's not quite as bad, but I'm going to give it a shot. Hopefully this lapel mic will do its, or the wind sock will do its job. So, this morning's topic is actually a follow-on from the last live stream I did, well it must be four weeks ago now, which was um, what was the most important lesson that I've ever learnt. So, this morning's live stream is called, Why is Evil so pervasive and it comes it comes from a question from my last live stream so let's just refresh seeing as it's been a month let's just refresh your memory i did a series of three live streams a month ago the third one what was the it was called the most important lessons i've ever learned the third one the third most important lesson i ever learned is that no one controls your emotions other than yourself. No one has that power other than you. The second most important lesson I've ever learnt is that none of us are our body. Our body is simply a vehicle that we travel in, a vehicle for your spirit soul to travel in. It's a vehicle that has a limited lifetime and when it can no longer function, you, the spirit soul, move on into another body. And the most important lesson, which was the one I talked about a month ago, is that the reason for everyone's motivation, uh, for everyone's justification, for the reason for why we do everything we do, is the need for love, spiritual love. And unfortunately, we're looking for love in all the wrong places, and we're getting the end result of what happens when you look for something in the wrong place. As a quick example, if you need nutrition and you eat plastic fruit instead of real fruit, it's not going to work very well for you. And that's what we're doing with love. We're looking, finding imitation love instead of actually uh, finding spiritual love. So that brought up a question, because in that live stream I talked about that when you tap into spiritual love, you, you know, there is no doubt about the power or of what you've tapped into because you, it's um, absolute and you will know it. When you find it, you will know. So I talked about that in that live stream, the power of absolute love, of unconditional spiritual love, of the samadhi that we reach, the bliss, that we experience and a question came up afterwards which is a very very valid question which I based today's live stream on the question was if unconditional love is the ultimate answer is what we're looking for why would we choose anything else knowing that that is the solution and once we have felt it how could we possibly be dragged away from it and I thought yes this is actually <laughs> this is really really good question um, you know we're home safe we we're accepted we feel unconditionally loved how would it be possible to be tempted away from that so so I call this topic it's today's topic why is evil so pervasive because or why is it so strong and I'm using that I'm using that term evil to describe what pulls us away from unconditional love in the Eastern cultures we could refer to that as Maya the illusionary energy the illusion of the plastic fruit that says, here I am, I'm real, it's, I'm good for you, look how shiny and perfect I am. But you eat it and there's no nutrition. So 
what what is known in Christianity as evil is known in other cultures, you know, other uh, spiritual traditions as Maya. So how is it possible? How is it possible that if you touch unconditional love, why would you be tempted? Why would you be the least bit interested in anything less? Once you've been there, why would you want to go anywhere else? So this is a question we came up with, and there's two things to understand as to how and why this is possible. Unconditional love is formed on a basis of free will. You can't force someone to love you. You give them the freedom to love you. That love is all about letting go, it's all about freedom, it's all about unconditional love. So with that in mind, that means we always, always have a choice to be held in the arms of unconditional love or to explore the alternatives. A bit like the story of the prodigal son, if you know your biblical stories, who had it all, so to speak, but wanted to go and experience the temptations that were coming from Maya, from the mind. So, if unconditional love, it, I'll just go, I'll say Christianity has this thing where they say, you know, there's a battle between good and evil. And it's like, well, how can there be a battle between good and evil? if good is the ultimate force that created everything. Evil wouldn't stand a chance. Well, I've never heard Christianity explain, other than the fallen angel concept, why evil can be such a challenge. But it can be a challenge because, and this is the most important thing to know, that not only do we have a choice, free will always, to choose good or evil but evil or Maya let's talk about let's talk it from, from the Eastern culture tradition Maya is powered by unconditional love so in other words the illusionary energy actually gets her power from unconditional love if she didn't then she wouldn't be much of a temptation. She wouldn't be much of an illusion because basically we would just look at her and go, oh, that fruit's plastic. I'm not going to eat that fruit. I mean, that's, you know, it's obvious <laughs> um, that that fruit's not good for me. However, in giving us our choice, our free will, it has been arranged by the Supreme that Maya is a perfect servant of the Supreme and is empowered by the Supreme and her job is to perfectly to put you perfectly in a, in a place of illusion to create a perverted reflection of the true of our true spiritual home to create a world that promises love everlast, uh, everlasting happiness peace um, contentment promises all this but is unable to deliver it and our mind is tempted because Maya acts through our mind and tempts us by saying here it is here it is so what we need to do is to understand that it's a lie understand that it's ultimately material, not spiritual, understand that this illusion is just putting us into a state of not seeing clearly. And we also have to realize that trying to fight illusion with willpower is also not the solution because willpower is using our own mind to fight our mind <laughs> and it can only last so long because Maya is stronger than willpower. So what is the solution? The solution is and always has been as spoken of in Christianity and in Eastern uh, spiritual traditions, the solution has always been 
to surrender, not to fight with the mind, but to surrender to the higher wisdom, the higher power, the higher knowledge, using your free will. This is the wisest use of your free will, is to surrender. Ignorance is not bliss. Ignorance is just situation that puts us in a state of illusion, which just causes suffering. But in our suffering, we start to ask questions about the decisions we've made, the path we're following. If the path we're following is the right one, why are we suffering? So I hope this gives you some food for thought. The reason why illusion is so believable, the reason why Maya seems so strong, the reason why evil seems so pervasive is because it is powered by the same force that powers unconditional love. So going up against it is not a very wise thing to do. So I hope that's made sense. Uh, live vegan, save lives, have a great Sunday, ahimsa. Uh,